Don't you just love when a big brand features your photo without your prior permission on their Instagram page or maybe even uses that photo on their website to promote their products and services? Well, actually, that's called stealing, but I still love that. But that wasn't the case only about six months ago where I did not enjoy my photos being stolen. And then everything changed and now I absolutely love when big brands steal my photos. So this is what this video is gonna be about. I will tell you how to make money from your images that you post anywhere online. Well, I post my images mostly on Instagram and that's where they get stolen from. And I will show you how you can make money from such theft. But let's start from the beginning. Hi guys, if it's your first time on my channel, my name is Michael Thomas, I'm a London-based time-lapse travel and architecture photographer, and my Instagram account is at London Viewpoints, which is somewhat popular. I've got 136,000 followers, my photos are semi-decent, I believe, so they do get stolen from time to time, and the way I approached it before is, if a brand worth my time to send an email or a DM and ask, hey, you've used my photo without my prior permission and you're promoting your products and services in that Instagram post or on your website, you should pay me money. This is my invoice for unauthorized use and I expect you'd pay that. And that would usually result in the post or the photo on their website just being removed and they say, sorry, we um, didn't know that you would be against it. We gave you a credit. Oh yeah, we gave you a credit. But yeah, no, we're definitely not gonna pay. And I really didn't have any idea how to go to court with them and try to get my compensation for that. And normally that was about it. I think for the 100 or 200 or so uh, instances that something like this happened and I followed up with a DM or an email, like three companies actually paid. Uh, not much. They paid some small amount that I requested from them for using my post without my permission on their Instagram, but they actually paid. But it wasn't really satisfactory, was it? 200 or so emails and yeah, free payments. Not great. And then earlier this year in May 2020, I was one of the speakers at an online conference about photo and video organized by my friends at Traverse Events where I attended one other session by my good friend Phil Ammon, who was talking about usage rights, licensing, and that's where he introduced me to a company that's got a website that you sign up with and they look through all your images and then they find matches of these images everywhere online. And the company we are talking about in this video is called Pixie.com. However, this is not a sponsored video, but when I first was speaking to my friend Phil, who recommended me to try them, he said, reach out to them, uh, tell them that I recommended you and they might sort something out for you. And they did. They sorted me out with three, six months uh, worth of their service because they probably looked at my Instagram, they saw how many of my photos were quite popular and how many followers I got. So they probably thought he's popular enough that some of his images, they are pretty cool, they must have got stolen. And they were. But you may ask, what's wrong with your photo being featured by a big brand that's probably got millions of followers and you get a ton of amazing exposure? Well, you can't really pay with exposure if you go shopping at your local supermarket. The way I see things, it does not matter if the brand is huge, millions of followers, or they got a thousand of followers. Imagine you walking into a supermarket and just taking a product out of that supermarket, leaving without paying, and then outside of the supermarket saying on your Instagram story, hey, I just took this from this cool supermarket would you think they'd be happy about that? They'd be like, what are you doing, mate? This is theft. So basically to prevent that, that supermarket hires security and they have CCTV cameras to see that people aren't stealing, right? And Pixie is like the security and CCTV for the images that you put out on the line. But then let's go back even further. Why exposure isn't great? Well, 
If a company is a big company or a small company, they're making money in some way. It's a business. I'm not talking about friends running some feature hub that they promote the best photographers and recommend uh, places to go. That's all nice and good. But if we're talking about a company that's got a specific business and it's not a charitable organization, they're in this business to make money. Well, they should have a budget to buy images and any content that they want to share on their social media profiles because it drums up business for them, not really for you. Yeah, some people will say that from exposure they will get some jobs here and there, but that's a big maybe. I've been featured in the past where I first started on Instagram, I thought well, exposure might be all right. It never really led to much work, unfortunately. The companies that have had the best kind of work and the most amazing paid kind of work, they never first started a relationship with me asking me how can we use your images for free. We always started with a commercial partnership that they pay for my content that I create for them and they enjoy it, it drums them more business and we get to do more and more cool work and that's how business works in general. Back to May 2020, I sign up to pixie.com, I link my Instagram with their service their service downloads all my images from Instagram because the plan I was put under allows for that many images to be monitored. And within a few days, I was getting hundreds of matches. It doesn't really search your images on Instagram itself. It searches them mainly on websites, not really on Twitter. Uh, because these are social media platforms that maybe their algorithm doesn't allow to search within. But it matches images that are yours or very, very close to yours anywhere online. And then it lets you choose which matches do you want to actually pursue as a legal claim to get money. Because quite a lot of hits will just get some random blog, some small image sharing websites that some user uploaded. And it's either not feasible for you to spend time even filling out the form for that, so you can send a takedown notice, or it will never be feasible for a legal partner, a lawyer to get involved to try to get paid from them because it was some user that uploaded to their website. So never mind that. Just go through and search page by page for all your matches that you've got out of real businesses, real companies, actual businesses that sell products, services, and they've used your image. Doesn't matter if with credit or not, they've used your image. So they're using it to sell more of their stuff. Hence, they should pay you for that. There's multiple categories that the website sort your matches by, for example, accuracy, commercial, countries, multiple images, and so on. Most likely, you'll be interested by the ones that go into the commercial folder, but you may find commercial use on other categories. So it's always good to actually go through yourself the list of matches because the website does the matches like magic itself. You don't have to do it photo by photo. It just gives you the matches every few days. It runs a massive search all over the world online and it finds you the stuff that matches towards your images. One thing to note is that currently Pixie is only working with 15 countries where their legal partners have a chance to win something and go against some business that's based in that country to win you money. Because when you think about it, um, countries like China, Russia, there's just no way in hell you would engage with some lawyer that would go after um, a brand that's based in that country. So they do not support that. I'm thinking that they will add certain countries at some time, but as I'm based in UK, UK is listed as one of these countries, most of my hits that are matches uh, commercial come from either United States or Europe. Not every country in Europe is listed, but for example, South Africa is also listed and Japan. So multiple countries around the world, but unfortunately not loads of countries that I also get hits from being Russia and China. These countries aren't listed, so you just ignore these matches. Once you see a match and you see that it's a valid sort of commercial match, you fill out a form that takes no longer than a minute or two. Maybe the first one will take you a couple of minutes to fill out, but later on it just is really simple. And then it submits that to a legal partner 
based in the country that the company um, is based. So I had a few matches from the UK, so it was all sorted within the UK. And then you wait. So when I first started in May, I submitted about 20 or 30 cases. Some of them were rejected. They said that they couldn't follow it. They found the website upon investigating the website that was the offender to be not valid for resolution but a few of the cases proceeded to being investigated by the legal team within Pixie. Then they get sent further to a legal partner, some sort of lawyer specializing in these kind of things. The lawyer sends um, emails or letters to the business, say that this happened and you need to pay for unauthorized use. And then when that proceeds, the company pays uh, what is due, you have a winning case. And now you probably ask, how does the split work? Let's assume that Pixie decides this image use was worth a thousand pounds. A legal company will say add two, three hundred pounds as the legal fees on top of that. The company ends up paying one thousand three hundred. Lawyer takes all their money. A thousand stays with Pixie and then Pixie splits 50 percent with you. So they make quite a good amount but you literally just signed up, filled out a two minute form and you get 500 pounds. Well, I'm just saying 500 pounds just to make the number round, but I can show you now some of the cases that I won and I've won three cases so far. My cut on the first case was 175 pounds, on the second case was 250 pounds, and on the third case was a 375 pounds. I actually like the incline of the cut I get. It's not percentage based, but it, I guess, depends on how the legal team decided that the photo was used to either promote services, products, and they valued the unauthorized usage rights, which you don't get involved. They decide all that. Then when the company pays, legal department takes their fee. What stays with Pixie gets split half-half. You get sent the amount. And that is brilliant because you don't do much, yet the whole process that is involved, the company that gets these letters, gets these emails about unauthorized use, well, they see that this is legit. A official um, legal representative contacted us and they threatened to go to court if you don't pay. So you know you're in the wrong and the company has to fork out the money and pay. And then I get the cut. Happy days. And without disclosing actually the company name that were the offenders that I've settled the case from, I can tell you that the first one was a house that someone actually set up a website that they will be renting in a sort of a commercial way. And uh, yeah, they just used my image on their website that was initially posted on my Instagram. So they settled quite early because they knew they were in the wrong. But when I looked on their website, because you see the details of the website of the offender, they were hiring actually that house out for that price a day. So one day's rent will give them that fee back. So don't you worry about them. They're doing just fine. Central London, big house location. Uh, in a commercial higher purposes, they'll be, they'll be fine. Another company was some sort of an online uh, legal company. So they understood, they're in the wrong. They use my image to just promote that they operate within a London area and they shouldn't have, they understand probably the legal implications of using someone's content without prior authorization. They settle pretty quickly. They're lawyers. They'll be fine too. Well, my most recent settlement was with a company that sort of puts images online and sells them. And they used my photo on there. And I think they were trying to sell my photo without my permission too. So that's probably why the settlement was the highest. 375 pounds was my cut of that settlement. And for some reason, they settled quite quickly too. So that was pretty happy. However, that was just the three settlements that I've got. And all of these three, I think I've submitted around May, June. And I remember when I was speaking to Phil, like how quickly does a turnaround of resolving a, a claim against a commercial um, organization work? He said sometimes it could be up to actually 12 months or even more before they actually pay. 
It's the communication between the legal department, the, the lawyer that gets involved, and especially if it's in different countries, it can take longer. But yeah, within my first six months, I've had three resolutions totaling up 800 pounds. And I literally didn't spend that much time, well, I didn't spend any time apart from filling out the form, chasing it. You could probably say that I fill out actually quite a few other forms and they're still pending, but you can go into every single case that is pending. And I have noticed actually, I've got three more cases that actually now have been settled. The company is just waiting for the offender to pay and then I'll get my split. So yeah, I'm quite happy. I'm just literally waiting for money to be transferred from these cases. I do not know how much the amount will be, but in a way, if you don't have to do much other than filling out the form and you're just getting the settlement, that's happy days. I, I will trust them in the fact that they'll get me a good amount because they're in it to also get a good amount. Hence, yeah, I'm waiting for quite a few other cases. Some London-based developers that build residential and commercial properties used my photo on their Instagram and then embedded it onto their website. And on the website, there is no credit because it's an em embed from their Instagram of just a photo, no caption. While on Instagram, they said, oh, thanks, Michael, London Viewpoints for um, sharing with us this photo. I never did. They just literally took it and they at least mentioned me, but then they embedded it on the website. And on the website, it's now a violation. So yeah, I'm waiting for that. However, speaking about unauthorized Instagram use, I was in contact with uh, one of uh, the admin at pixie.com and the lady told me that most likely we can also try to go for someone that used your image without authorization on just their company's business Instagram account. I wasn't quite able to do that. So maybe in the future, if that one case that I submit eventually will go through and we'll see how it gets resolved, I will do another video on, um, yeah, using Pixie to make money from theft because that's really what it's about. Um, you, as a photographer, it doesn't matter if professional or amateur, you put content that you do not authorize others to use. It is your content. If some company even wants to use your image, shouldn't they at least, at least reach out to you via DMs or an email? Hey, we love this photo. We would love to use it and mention you. You'd get this and that exposure. Then you'd get a chance to say, is it worth it for me? Are you a 10 million account with the audience that I really want to reach? Hence, maybe the exposure would be worth it. Or you ask them, well, not for free, really, because I won't get much from it because some of my images were stolen by businesses that literally has a, have a thousand followers. What sort of exposure do I get from that? None. Um, hence, if they were to ask me, I'd say, mm, well, what sort of products do you have? Maybe we can do something together. Maybe you can give me some of your free products and I will give you one off use of this image. But then again, I had a few companies reply to me, oh no, no, we, we thought that you just might give us the usage for the free photo, sorry, we can't share our valuable products with you. Well then, that was the end of conversation because I just didn't want to be rude back to them. So what else can I say? I will definitely be staying with Pixie because uh, they're like my CCTV security system and enforcement for when theft happens. So once my free period runs out, I will be getting probably the advanced plan, which is $39 a month, monitors up to 30,000 images from what I see on the website, which is plenty for me. I only got like four or 5,000 images online but you could easily go with a personal one, 2,000 images monitored for $19 a month, or even start with a free account which monitors your 500 images. If you connect your Instagram to it, it will probably take the last 500 images that you've got and monitor them for free. And you can just start with a free, and if you get a hit from your last 500 images, then you can still pursue the sort of legal way to get the payment because they will make their money from the 50% cut that they get from winning 
with uh, yeah, getting unauthorized usage rights fee from the company that you got the match hit and followed up with. So I see Pixie as they're not in it to, you know, make money from the monthly fees. They want to make money from your matches, which will make you the exact same amount of money, which works brilliantly as far as I can see it. I wouldn't recommend you a product I don't personally use myself and don't find brilliant. And Pixly is one of these products that I use myself. I do have an affiliate code with them. So if you do want to sign up and support the channel, the affiliate code will be in the caption. So I would love if you use that. Maybe Pixie would, I don't know, give me a few months more free at that rate that I currently got, which doesn't save me a lot of money because I am more after winning the big bucks with the companies that just steal away my photos, not the monthly fee. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, share it with your fellow photographers or anyone really that creates content that they put work into and they wanna share online and they don't wanna see it stolen. And if it is stolen, they could make some money from it. Share it with these guys. Or maybe you could just come back to this video when you get your first payment from Pixie and then comment, I got my first payment, thanks a lot, Michael. That would really fill me up with pleasure that this video actually made you money. You can follow me on Instagram where I post my photos. And if you are a brand and are into theft, please fill your boots, steal away my photos as long as you're based in these 15 countries, as I will talk to you later. Otherwise, guys, have a great day and see you in the next video.